Hi, this is Elias, and you're watching Ophthalmology with MAS. Today we'll be doing the retinoscopic component of the darkroom test. And retinoscopy is done to look at the refractive status of the eye. So the first step is to differentiate between an ophthalmoscope and retinoscope. So unlike an ophthalmoscope, which has a aperture with different, different settings, a retinoscope does not have an aperture. It just has this opening, which is a containing mirror, either a plane mirror or a concave mirror. It has an eyepiece or an observer uh, piece through which the examiner looks at the glow that's coming in. It also has a focusing sleeve, which is this. This is the focusing sleeve. The way to switch it on is by rotating the neck and you will see a streak of light rather than a round light. Now by rotating the neck, you can change the streak's direction from a vertical to a horizontal. Now if you move the sleeve all the way up, that is where you will have a concave mirror and if you move the sleeve all the way down that is where you have a plane mirror. If you move this forward and then back you can see that the luminance keeps on changing. The same thing will be seen if you have the concave mirror. It becomes brighter and then it becomes fainter. So what I like to do is I like to keep it right in the middle and then if you move it the brightness does not change and this is the setting that I like. When you're doing retinoscopy, there are three possible options. One is that when you move the streak, there is no movement observed, which is neutralization. The other option is that you observe a width movement. And the third option is that you observed and against movement. And the formula to use to figure out the refractive status of the eye is the refractive status is equal to the lens introduced between the patient and the retinoscope for neutralization minus the lens equivalent to the working distance. So for simplification, we are going to assume that we are doing retinoscopy from a distance of one meter, which would amount to plus one diopter of lens as diopter is equal to one over the distance in meters. Now, the three options that we had was neutralization, with movement, and against movement. So if you have a patient uh, who has neutralization on the working distance, that means there is no lens that you need to introduce to cause neutralization. So using this formula as zero, because we have not introduced any lens, minus plus one diopter, which is the working distance, which comes out to be uh, minus one diopter. So for neutralization, it will always be myopia equivalent to the working distance. Now, alternatively, if you have an against movement, then the lens that you need to introduce for neutralization is a minus lens. And when you introduce a minus one lens, the refractive status would then be lens introduced which is a minus one minus the working distance which is a plus one is equal to minus two now assume that you introduce the minus one lens and once you introduce the minus one uh, one lens the against movement converted to a with movement so this means that you need to decrease the power of the lens so you would then introduce a minus 0 0.5 lens and let's assume that it neutralizes at a minus 0.5. So lens introduced for neutralization is a minus 0.5 minus the working distance. So it would be a minus 
1.5 diopter. Let us further assume that once we introduce the minus 0.5, the gain's movement converted to a width movement, so we will have to decrease the power of the lens further, so we introduce a minus 0.25 diopter lens, and then you minus the working distance, and it comes out to be a minus 1.25 diopter. So in every option, you are having myopia, which is always greater than the working distance. Now we are left with doing retinoscopy and getting a width movement. So if you get a width movement, you have to introduce a plus diopter lens. So let's assume we get a width movement and then we introduce a plus one lens on which it neutralizes. So if it neutralizes on a plus one diopter, the refractive status would be lens introduced minus the working distance is equal to zero. So the first option would be the patient being emetropic. That means having no refractive error and therefore retinoscopy being used to find out the refractive status of the eye rather than the refractive error. Now let's assume we introduce the plus one diopter lens and we still get a width movement. So then we are going to increase the power of the lens to a two diopter and let's assume that once we introduce a plus two diopter lens you get the neutralization. So the the refractive status of the patient would be lens introduced minus the working distance, which is equal to plus one diopter, which means that such a patient will have hypermetropia. Now, if we introduce a plus two diopter lens and from a width movement, the the, the, the movement changed to an against movement, that means we need to decrease the number. So then we would introduce a plus 1.5 diopter lens and therefore the patient will have the refractive status of plus 1.5, which is the lens introduced for neutralization, minus the working distance, which is equal to a plus 0.5 diopter. So every type of hypermetropia will be having a width movement. Now, let's assume that you find a width movement. You have introduced a plus 1 diopter lens and you start getting an against movement. So you are going to decrease the power of the lens and you will go to a plus 0 0.5. So let's assume that now, once you introduce the plus 0 0.5 diopter lens, you achieve the point of neutralization. So the refractive status of this patient would be a plus 0 0.5 diopter minus the working distance, which is which amounts to a minus 0 0.5 diopter, which is a myop. And so let's assume that you introduce a plus 5 diopter and you start getting an against movement. So you're going to reduce the power of the lens introduced and you introduce a plus 0 0.25 diopter lens and you achieve neutralization at that. Then the refractive status of the patient would be plus 0 0.25 minus the working distance which is equal to a minus 0 0.75 diopter. So the third option with the width is that the patient will be a myo, which is always less than the working distance. So just to give you a recap, retinoscopy is done to look at the refractive status of the eye rather than the refractive error. If you do a retinoscopy and have neutralization even before introducing a lens, that means you have myopia, which is equivalent to the working distance. If you have an against movement, that means the patient has a myopia. You will always find that in against movements, you have myopia, which is greater than the working distance. In the width movement, there are three possibilities. Emetropia, in which case, you will find neutralization on introduction of the lens equivalent to the working distance, hypermetropia of any magnitude, and myopia, which is always less than the working distance. So hypermetropia would always have a width movement, whereas a myope can have an against movement, 
if it is greater than the working distance, it can have no movement if it is equivalent to the working distance, or can have a with movement if it is less than the working distance. So to do retinoscopy, you basically follow the same principles that you followed for ophthalmoscopy. And as this is a darkroom test, the first thing that you do is that you dim the lights. And after dimming the light, you will, if you are looking at the right eye, you will hold the retinoscope in your right hand and you will look at uh, through the peephole from the from your right eye so right 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 and you will sit at an arm's length from the patient and then switch the uh, the retinoscope on and then while asking the patient to look at a distance so that his accommodation is completely relaxed you are going to move the light from right to left and left to right and you will look at what the reflex is once you have seen the reflex you are going to introduce the lenses and then neutralize the reflex or go to the point where the reflex is going in the opposite direction once you have done this in this vertical meridian you are going to rotate this streak in a horizontal position and then move it from up and down and then based on how you are seeing the reflex you are going to introduce the lenses to a point of neutralization or reversal once you have done it to the right eye you are going to shift and now that I'm going to see the left eye I will hold the retinoscope in my left hand and will look through the left eye so left 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 once again coming to the to an arm's length while uh, if I'm looks at a distant object accommodation is relaxed and then I will keep the streak vertical and move it from right to left and left to right and observe the reflex once i have done that i'm going to introduce lenses to neutralize starting with the lens of the working distance and then moving up till the time i have either neutralization or reversal after doing that i'm going to uh, i'm going to rotate the streak to a horizontal one and then move it from up to down once again observing the reflex and then we'll introduce the lens to a point of neutralization or reversal so while doing retinoscopy there are only two types of reflexes that you will see uh, and i'm using a retinoscopy stimulator offered by american academy of ophthalmology and i'm going to demonstrate what this streak looks like so there are only two options that you get when you are doing the retinoscopy so uh, one is a width movement and that is if you keep the streak at a vertical and move it from left to right the red reflex moves with the direction of the retinoscopic streak so when you're moving it from left to right and right to left the streak also moves from left to right and right to left now if you keep it in a horizontal direction and move it from up to down the retinoscopic streak will also move up and down so it will move with the movement of the retinoscopic streak alternatively the other movement that you can see is the against movement and when you are doing an against movement and keeping the streak vertical if you move it from left to right the streak will move from right to left so it will move against the movement of the retinoscopic streak if you bring it in a horizontal position and move it from up to down the red glow will be moving from down to up so against the movement of the retinoscopic streak. Thank you.